Okay, so I'm, I'm jumping over to the greatest commandment, also known as the Shema. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, your Elohim, Yahweh is one. Well, what is one? The Hebrew word is echad. And in Greek, it's heis. And the word one, right? Well, a Trinitarian will say one is a compound unity representing like a cluster of grapes. All right, one cluster of grapes. Or that husband and wife is one. So you have two people that are one. Or the U.S. Army is one. There's, I don't know, uh, 300,000 soldiers or something. And yet they are one. So you're using it more of a compound unity. But I think what everyone knows is context is king. What does the context say? Well, does it say we are one? We, you know, it says uh, I, Yahweh, I, you alone are Yahweh. So when we see the word one all throughout Deuteronomy 6, as you continue reading down the chapter, you'll see the singular pronouns, and he's speaking a singular pronoun way. He's not saying us or nothing like that. So uh, that's the scripture, Deuteronomy 6, 4. Yeah, let me say that since, since you're on the singular yeah. pro, pronouns. Hold on, I'm flipping through the book right now. Uh, let me get to it. So there are... There's some good comments on here on the side. Uh, I don't know how you do things here, but if there's any good questions or comments on the side when do we get to yeah i'm saving some of them so there's in stream yard you can you can star them and save them for later yeah jonah jonah says so is mr lawson saying yeshua is no deity he's not fully man and fully god i'd like to answer that one eventually that's a good question uh where's that where was that at uh jonah uh, you scroll up some she's she's uh her brain is her brain is turning she's all she's john 17 4 john 1 1 she's uh She's on fire. She's ready to talk about this. It's good. Yeah. So since you were talking about singular pronouns a minute ago, I just want to share in in the book number fourteen. I guess that's section fourteen. It says L scripture list. L is singular and refers to the supreme being. And there's over two hundred scripture references just for that. So, right. L is singular compared to Elohim. Right. So. Yeah. And when you look at the word L and you ask a Trinitarian. When, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but when L told me to make a sacrifice unto him, which one of the three said that? Which L? And they, I haven't heard them tell me, but they're like, well, it's one of the three. And it's like, I don't know. Like, it, to me, it just doesn't really hold water. And I'm yeah, not trying and, to be rude. but And one of the one of the biggest ones, because me and my dad used to go around and around when I was younger about the Trinity. And one of the biggest problems I had was when... The Messiah said, "My L, my L. Why have I, why have you forsaken me?" He didn't say myself, myself. Why have I forsaken myself? He was talking to the Father in heaven while he was yeah. on that stake dying. He was not. Talking That's a good to example. Himself. If I can, if I can steal that real quick. So, the argument of myself, myself. Why have you forsaken me? Can we use that for a Trinitarian? Maybe we can only is. use that. We can only use that for modalists because yeah. only a modalist thinks that it's the same person, right? So who's he talking to, right? But a Trinitarian will say, "Well, the Father was in heaven, Yeshua was on earth, the Holy Spirit is doing his thing, invisible." So yeah, he's talking to the second or the first person of the Trinity. They see it like a family, like the son was speaking to his dad. So a Trinitarian, uh, you would have to go about it differently, but that would be a great argument for modalists certainly for oneness where it's like well if that is the, the son is the father then who's he talking to you know what i mean yeah so yeah uh back to the word one echad in hebrew it's the primary cardinal number one in hebrew so when the hebrew children jewish children learn how to count as little boys and girls they start with echad and it also means alone and by myself so uh, also, there's some verses here where the word one is used to represent a single thing. Like, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you, for he was but one. Abraham was one person. He wasn't three people. When I call him, that I might bless him and multiply him. So when a Trinitarian wants to take Deuteronomy 6, 4 and say it's a compound unity, well, what do we do with verses like this? How is Abraham a compound unity? How many Abrahams was there? I mean, I think they want the word one to mean something. Whenever it's convenient, they want it to mean a compound unity, but it can also mean yep. singular. I agree. I agree. One can be used for a cluster of grapes. One can be used for a husband and wife. 
And one can be used for an entire army or nation, right? Israel is one, right? Thing is, you got to know the context. Deuteronomy 6 is not giving you any signs of a cluster of grapes or a husband and wife or an army. Deuteronomy chapter 6 has a singular pronouns and it's one person speaking and there's no signs of a compound unity. So uh, personal pronouns, we already talked about it. If we repeat things, it's not a big deal because I think this is so important. If someone's new at this, it might be good to hear a few things a few times. So, uh, yeah, the, father, you notice the father repeated himself many times in scripture. So, so we need to hear things repeated. Yeah, <laughs> for, for yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, personal pronouns, like, like you said, it's over a thousand times in scripture. So you'll hear a Trinitarian uh, or modalist take a single verse out of the New Testament, Colossians, Hebrews or whatever, and say, look, look, Yeshua is the creator, you know. And I'm like, all right. Or... We can look at the thousands of verses that say that Yahweh is an individual person by himself and that maybe there's a second or third way to read Colossians that doesn't have to make Yeshua the creator of the universe. Maybe Paul is hard to understand if we look at it deeply, look at the Greek and the structure of it, that maybe there's another way to understand what Paul is saying. 